Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm headed to a place in uh, Dumfries and Galloway called Drumlandry Castle. Now it's a spectacular building but that's not the only reason I'm going to go there. On the grounds of that estate there's actually an old Roman fort. I think I'll start up here because Drumlandry is down to the left here. It's about 10 miles south. So I'll ride down and have a look. Look at this. I came up here because, well, I've never been up here before, but it also gives a great vantage point of the Nith Valley. There's a lot of ice here, actually. You might not be able to see it very well, but... Yeah, maybe you can. <laughs> Stunning here. Yeah. Anyway, let's go. The temperature here, I know I don't have my gloves on, but the temperature here in Scotland will barely rise above freezing now, between now and sort of February. A little donkey. <laughs> a little pony as well. There seems to be a lot of horses here. There must be, like, stables and stuff around. I don't mean in this field, I mean here in general. In Sankar itself. Look at this. This is why... On these single track roads, you need to be careful particularly folks when maybe there's an oncoming vehicle because the last thing you want to be doing is aquaplaning on that ice if you're moving over for a car that's coming in your direction it'll be a disaster in fact I'm going to skip across it doesn't matter how good your tread is it won't hold up well against ice Clark's Little Ark this is obviously one of these little petting zoos for families that's quite a nice idea see a little pony on a hill there there's more of them there. There's some sheep and pigs and stuff on the picture. Anyway, before we go any further, I'm going to put my gloves on. Because I must say it's frozen. Or I'm frozen. If you've watched the last video, you'll have seen this building here. The old toll booth. And here on the left hand side, just beyond the lights, is the oldest post office in the world. <laughs> Incredible. Established in 1712. Right then, let's go. Look at this. Beautiful golden hour. It's going to be dark in less than an hour, but that's alright, plenty of time. This is Dull Peter Hill. In the last video, I talked about the young lady who was abducted by the Crichtons at Sankar Castle there. She would have come from here. It's only about a mile and a half. Over on the right hand side here guys, this is the River Nith. Well, we'll get there before the sun sets. It's good. Alright. Mandrid Castle. So folks, you're welcome to come to these country estates. There's not a problem riding in here. Let's have a look at this. So oh, this is the Nith. You see she's quite a substantial river, eh? This runs all the way from Dumfries up to right through Newcomnock actually. And beyond up into southern Ayrshire. And this. As I said earlier, the reason I'm coming to Drumlandrig, I want to look at Drumlandrig itself because it's quite spectacular but there's also a Roman fort here and an older uh, sorry a, a medieval castle as well so we'll have a look at some of that we'll talk about why they were here why this was so strategically important look at this valley it's stunning better slow down scaring the sheep incredible views all around of the Nith Valley and the hills on either side. From Landrig. Look at the size of this place folks, it's absolutely vast. It's huge. This castle here was built between 1679 and 1689. So it took about 10 years to build, yeah. Now, whilst it was being built, 
the family were staying over at Sankar Castle. I went there on my last video. Yeah, if you want to have a look at that, you can see it after this. Now, the Lord who built this, William Douglas, believe it or not, spent one night here. Yeah, after he built it, he said that he didn't like it. So he moved back to that old ruin. <laughs> Obviously it wasn't a ruin then. Under ordinary circumstances, you can come here and go inside and do too. It's a vast estate. You can come here and you can walk around to your heart's content. There's a little kiddies play park and stuff here as well. Now, in this building there are Rembrandts and Da Vinci's. <laughs> I think the Da Vinci's valued some in the region of 150 million pounds. Quite an incredible sum of money. This building here has got 120 rooms. You see these turrets? There's 17 of those in this building here. And everything we see around here are the old stable blocks, the stable building. I'm going to ride down here, but I want to just show you this. You see the gardens here at the back? Now, there's a little children's play park there. Just beyond that is a Roman fort. Dates back to Antonine times. I'm going to go and have a look at that now. And beyond that again, there's Tibbers Castle, yeah, which is a medieval castle. It's built around the 12th century. Okay, so what other interesting facts can I tell you about Drumlandrig before we go and see this Roman fort or the site of this Roman fort? Well, the sycamore trees here are over 300 years old. They're called the Drumlandrig sycamores, and they're actually the largest in Britain. It's amazing what money can buy. It said that the Duke of Buccleuch is the largest landowner in the British Isles. Yeah, he's a peer. Now, I read somewhere that he's worth something in the region of 213 million. I reckon the artwork in this building's worth more than that alone. 213 million? Yeah, peanuts. That man's a billionaire. Let's head down the hill. Beautiful, huh? Now we want to go over here actually. Let's see if we can park somewhere. This will do nicely. As you can see, Drumlandrig behind us here. The reason the Romans were in this part of Scotland at that time, we're talking about 142 AD about you know 160 something like that is because they were pushing north from Hadrian's Wall and at this point they were trying to secure southern Scotland yeah because they were building the Antonine Wall from the Clyde over to the, the Firth of Forth and it took them about 12 years to build that wall with all the castles There's about 12 castles on the Antonine Wall they actually discovered this a couple of decades ago when they were doing an aerial survey on a particularly hot, dry day. You could see the outline of this fort here, running from here all the way back to the kiddies' playground here before you get to Drumlandry Castle itself. And this here would have been the area where the main gate was, <laughs> looking out across the valley here. There have been a gate on all four sides actually. The main gate was over here. The officers' quarters were at this side of the building, yeah? And then the barracks were running in rows back in this direction. Just exactly here is uh, Tibber's castle, a 12th century castle, over in the trees there. When you look at a river like this, and it's not massive, but it's still quite a significant barrier if you're trying to move men and horses, but in particular supplies, yeah? We're talking about food, wooden carts, that type of thing. Because back then, if you didn't need to build a bridge, then don't build a bridge. Right here is a ford, yeah, which is shallow water. Basically, it was an easy place to cross the river. And that was still used right up through medieval times, folks. Now, believe it or not, whilst I'm standing on a fort, if we look here, there was actually a Roman camp here and another one here on the opposite side. Now these would have been more temporary, but still, 
they would house troops for significant periods of time. Thought that the Romans were essentially here to control this river crossing. It's a reasonable sized fort, but by Roman standards it wasn't that big. It's thought to hold about 600 auxiliaries. But if we look out through the valley here, this is Durris Deer. There's actually a fortlet out there as well. And there's different fortlets in this area. So they would be rotating men and troops from here out into these fortlets in the hills around here. The majority of these um, fortlets, these smaller forts, were along the Roman roads, folks. Yeah, This area was so important that it was actually where three Roman roads converged. Yeah, So they obviously saw it as being significant. Now, the very fact that we've got this vast castle on the hill here tells you that that importance continued throughout the centuries. Yeah, The Douglases used this as a ford. They used it as an area to control southwest Scotland. It's much easier to come up through a river valley like this than it is to go through the mountains. And that's been the nature of warfare here in Scotland. The invaders come up through the lowlands the Scots will try and hold the high ground. You see that to this day, even still, in different parts of the world. So of course, it makes perfect sense. Like most invaders here in Scotland, the Romans were not here for a particularly long period of time. You know, they came and they went. Uh, the period between Hadrian's Wall and, and the Antonine Retreat, let's call it, was particularly short. They only, they, they manned the Antonine Wall for about 25 years. Now when you consider it took them about 12 years to build the thing, and how much time and work and effort went over into subjugating the southern part of the country here. Well who really knows? But one thing I do know, if I was a local to this area, and the Romans had built a wall south of here, and they were in the process of occupying this territory, and building a wall north of here, essentially making this the largest open air prison on earth. I think I would still want to fight, don't you? So eventually the Romans gave up, yeah? And when they abandoned the Antonine Wall, they also abandoned this fort here. It's thought that they set it in fire. That would have been around 160 AD, and they were gone. They went back south of the Hadrian's Wall, and they never came back. <laughs> Pretty much the story of Scotland, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's the weather. Well, we're going to be riding home in the dark again. Anyway, that's it for this one, guys. I really hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Maybe even hit that notification bell so you know the next time I upload a video to YouTube. If you want to watch another vlog or another install, have a look at one of these here. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.